My name's Chloe, I'm a second year student occupational therapist and I believe you're an occupational therapist too. I am. Um, and I'm really uh, looking into mental health roles, um, so I thought it'd be a good idea for you to share a bit about your role as an occupational therapist. Cool. So my name's Ollie and you're right, I am an occupational therapist based in Gloucester and the Forest of Dean in the Community Assertive Outreach Team. Wow. Um, so could you tell us about your job at the moment, what it consists of? Yes, so I'm based in the Assertive Outreach Team, which is a community mental health team. Um, we're a specialist service, uh, we work mainly with people with psychosis or bipolar. We also work with people with substance misuse issues and uh, people with complex needs, or people with a mixture of all of those things. <laughs> um, how did you find out about the job? I found out about it on the NHS Jobs website. Right. I was looking for jobs in the area. It came up. I thought, well, I've never heard of that before. Mm -hmm. Had a look. Thought it sounded interesting. Applied online. Got offered an interview. Went to the interview and got offered the job. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what does a typical day look like in your job? Well, it can be varied. really varied. Um, so, I, although I'm employed as an OT. Mm -hmm. I do some generic work as well, so that's care coordinating, and right. then, so I have almost two separate caseloads within the team. Mm. Um, and it's really up to me how I balance those two, so some days can be really OT, other days I don't really do a huge amount of OT work, although even when you're care coordinating it's always with sort of the OT hat on. Yeah. Um, I probably see three or four clients a day, um, again that can vary, if mm. none of them want to see you it can be none. Yeah. Um, and what you do with them can be really varied as well. So it can be sort of things like um, do a bit of guitar playing yesterday, swimming, football. Then it can also be doing things like filling out benefits forms, doing driving. We did a driver's license form a little mm. while ago with someone. Mm. Um, so looking at sort of how his medical needs sort of impact his ability to yeah. drive and sort of feeding back to the DVLA on that. Mm. Um, it can also be doing sort of some of the more medical stuff. So um, doing reviews with doctors and bits. Um, equally, if there's sort of an urgent bit of work or an emergency, then there is the expectation that you'll have to put sort of all your plans to one side and deal with that. Yeah. So, yeah, it can be quite chaotic and oddly I enjoy that aspect <laughs> of a job really. <laughs> um, can you describe what your, your career journey looks like so far? So, yeah. I suppose what inspired you and where you've gone since you okay. went to uni? So, I, I trained in York. Um, which right. I really liked and then I stayed in Yorkshire for a few years afterwards. I mm. did two different rotations. I worked in Hull in the sort of the medical rotation where I did sort of care of the elderly, orthopaedics, hand therapy yeah. and then uh, took a job in Barnsley um, on their mixed rotation because I've always been interested in mental health. Yeah. So I did um, community paediatrics, inpatient mental health and then community mental health and then finally settled here in Gloucestershire mm -hmm. in the AOT. <laughs> um, what attracted you to working in the area of mental health? Because you've had quite a variety. I have. Um, <laughs> when I started, mental health was sort of what I had in mind. Mm. Um, I sort of fell into the physical health thing after uni, sort of, because that's where the job was. Yeah. Um, but prior to that, my passion has always been for mental health. Um, Grown up in a family of sort of NHS and social worker people, and so I've always been surrounded by that, and always grown up surrounded by sort of stories about sort of mental health work, and yeah, yeah, it's just what I've always known, and I just love it. That's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> um, what does your um, profession add to a person's recovery? I think for myself as the OT, um, I think I'm blessed in that. I sort of see our clients later on in their journey. I think yeah. when they're really medically unwell, um, there's often not a huge role for me. It's knowing the doctors and the nurses, sort of looking at the pharmacology really and sort of trying to stabilise someone's sort of mental state really. Yeah. And often functionally, there's not a lot to look at at that point. And so it's quite nice that I get to see people once they're in a better place and yeah. it's starting to look at um, you know, I guess what can life be for someone yeah, with a long-term mental health need yeah. and yeah it's really nice that I suppose you look at yeah the function what have they got what do they want to achieve and mm. how can we help them to 
make that happen. It's really person-centred then. It's really person-centred and I think, again, because of the long-term nature of some of our clients, actually we get to work with them in some cases for years. Yeah. Um, so you do develop a really good relationship and it's, it is that sort of the NHS dream of working with someone for a long period of time yeah. and really being able to see a difference that you've made. Yeah. Um, so what would you say to someone who is considering a career in mental health? I'd say do it. It's, yeah. I can't imagine doing anything else. Um, it's not always easy. It can, it can be difficult. It can be quite uh, demanding. I think um, it can be quite emotionally draining at times. Mm. I think um, working with people with quite significant needs, it can be difficult. Um, but equally, it's so rewarding when things start to go right and when yeah. you see people in a good patch and you think, I've been able to do that. And working with people, whether it's in mental health or in physical health, yeah. is just the best thing. Thank you very much You're for coming welcome. today. <laughs>